How's it going, everyone? Welcome oh, back boy. to Pixelated Thoughts. <laughs> we have swapped out Chibi for Chris today because we're going to be talking about Power World. I think we swapped the wrong person. We, 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 we should have swapped out fucking Rabbit. It's understandable. It's, it's always a thought. And we're going to talk about Power World, I think, for like 30, 40 minutes, and then we're going to dive into some Xbox things afterwards because there was some big news. So, to start, I think we'll push over to Josh. Josh. When you first played Power World, what was your expectations of that game? Um, I kind of figured it was going to be like this Pokemon parody, which I kind of wish they advertised it as, or they may, you know, it could have probably um, dodged a lot of this heat that they've been getting from everybody. Um, but going into it, I, I figured it was going to be a goofy ass game, and it would be fun to see the kind of shit that they, um made these little pals do (laughs) chris what about you yeah no i mean the same thing um i knew that it was going to be kind of hey let's get as close as we can to not getting sued you know without being sued you know um but i i really enjoyed it i thought it was it was definitely different I mean, you, you spent most of the time building, so we'll get into that in a second. <laughs> I did have a single-player playthrough oh, where did... I, I played the game. <laughs> this man did... We had, like, an entire thing. We just built, like... He tried to build his own metropolis, and, you know, it burnt down when he first started out. But <laughs> those types of things happen. Brad, what did you think when you first uh, hopped in, when I first, like, brought this up? Like, hey, let's play some Power World because it's coming um, out. I expected a better Pokemon, <clears throat> and that's what we got, so... Okay. You know, you know. Here's the here's the funny thing, right? It's just a very strong, Here, bold statement. Here's the funny thing. So, this game is probably, I think, one of Game Pass's biggest successes. It's one of Steam's biggest successes in terms oh, yeah. of indie games. Still is. Right now, I think the total is 12 million on Steam, 7 million on Game Pass, which are fucking insane numbers. And I don't think there's a title out there that comes close right now. And you know, when it was first announced, you know, they kind of did market it as like you're just battling other people and capturing pals. And then it became a survival title. And I think, you know, them kind of leaning into that aspect made sense because you can take your pals and make them do a bunch of work. And it's uh, it gets it gets pretty interesting because it's actually fairly detailed. Right. I think it's streamlined as, you know, in terms of like the way survival games mostly work. Like, I don't think there's any difficulty in building up anything. But was there anything anyone was surprised by with Power World? Anyone can go like was anything surprised by this game? The level of detail in the building was actually pretty insane. Um, I know. I wasn't expecting as... <laughs> right, but I, I mean, it, there are obviously things that, it, you know, it could be worked on or whatever, but as far as, like, initial release, I mean, this is considered, like, a beta, right? So, yeah. or not a full release. Um, so, with the amount of stuff that they have in there, it's pretty awesome, so... Pretty insane, yeah. Especially when we were like looking at all the stuff, different stuff that was just getting created. And then you have like all these different items you can add, whether it was like cosmetic or defensive, because you could put up sandbags and turrets and stuff like that. Brad, what did we find? We were like, kind of messing around. You found like this thing you can kind of get on top of to yell at the pals to make them work harder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a, a monitoring stand. <laughs> it's, it's basically just the... the uh a podium <laughs> that, what, you just stand in it yeah so you just basically tell them to work yeah, harder. you just tell them to work harder that was basically because like you know at, at, basically when you're looking at the game as it starts out it's like really basic functions for the pals they all serve a purpose like you know some are gatherers some are you know actually working in stone quarries all that type of stuff you're like okay cool and then as soon as you get down the levels they like literally start having like production lines you know yeah i was yeah. like <clears throat> this feels wrong <laughs> because essentially <laughs> you're grabbing as i think you can get up to 20 working i think that's yeah the cap. i think so i have mine set to 15 that's 15 yeah so you can cap it at 20 and just create these production lines i think you've seen like certain <clears throat> tiktoks and ig posts where it's like people are like working oh, some Amazon of them are factory. pretty damn yeah it's 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 nice it's impressive what people have thought of and and, and have created and then, in terms of like navigating how, where everything is if you watch the some of those jack like it actually has like a podium there and you just get on top and you just like pretty much like yell at them and demand that they work hard and stuff like that really it's really See, I, I haven't built the podium <clears throat> we, i think but, we, uh i think we built it out of like curiosity it's just like yeah, brad yeah. and he built the what? butcher knife out of curiosity yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's a fucking psycho uh, 
Yeah. So the well, a lot of the items they don't. It doesn't tell you exactly what it does. It was it's it, like with the the monitoring stand. It was literally like, it was it was like instruct your pals what to do. Like that's literally all it said. So it was just like so I built it and it was just like it and it was funny because like there's like a happy pal, a sad pal, and then like a tortured pal, and it's like you get to pick which one. <laughs> it's like going to the doctor like how are you feeling today you know? yeah depresso. but in pals we don't give a shit well, he's he's probably the funniest depresso is like an entire person i feel like that yeah. was like representative of somebody who made the game they were like you know what guys i got an idea i got an idea well, and it, pokemon yeah and you see how like his his animations when he's working dude it's fucking hilarious when he's like mining he's like he's like looking away he's like just while- Hitting the rocket shit. <laughs> well, like we were getting like notifications during gameplay. It's like the presso doesn't want to work or he's not feeling it. And we're like butcher. And Chris's immediate reaction was like butcher him. <laughs> Get rid of him. We don't have time. Don't for this. We don't have time for this shit, dude. Yeah, I, replacements. I am shocked that they included the butcher knife. That is. I don't know if you've used it, Jack. I haven't. It is hilarious. And also just like <laughs> so morbid because pretty much what happens like Brad it was like, oh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna try this out, and he butchers one of the lamb balls, and pretty much what it does is it blurs the entire, it blurs like the lamb ball itself, and then it shows you chopping into it, and then it's dead. And I was like, <laughs> what the fuck, man? Which, by the way, you can, you can use it on the merchants as well. I did not know them. that. Yeah, you can capture people in that game, which is <laughs> yeah, yeah, amazing. even yeah, though it's like, them apparently. Yeah, I've seen some glitches for the. Uh... The black market guy. It talks about how it's frowned upon and stuff like that. I was like, I guess not, because you know, like he doesn't do a lot of work, but you can always, if you throw him out there, you can keep going back to him, and he always, if uh, <laughs> you can actually reset his inventory over and over. Yeah, just so. keep, just keep him in the pal ball. Like, come on out, motherfucker! Like, yep. what do you got for me? <laughs> nope. He drops a lot of gold. Oh no, it's insane. something. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The moment, um, like, the, the thing about the game is like it's it's. You know, you can customize the world to however you want, right? So, oh yeah, double experience, quadruple it, whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, I think we. I turned. We tried to like make it as quick as possible because we want to get to the guns and stuff like that. And you know, it pretty much requires you to mine as much ore as possible. Yeah, you have to have certain materials. You have to have a lot of ingots, <clears throat> all that stuff. I yeah. just love. Well, the that's fact why I ended up setting up a base. Yeah one of my second bases in like an area full of ores. We're kind of worried that if we set up a second base, like Chris would take up all the resources. Cause dude, <laughs> the, I he, gather my own when shit. He, when, man. He, when he built like the science and technology center, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Here? <laughs> like, what's going? What university is this? <laughs> the university of balance, <laughs> but inside it's a sweatshop. <laughs> That's essentially because it's funny. Like when Brad, I think Brad read like a synopsis of the game. It's like, oh, you're we're, we're battling poachers. I'm like, I don't know if we're better than them. Man. Like, <laughs> no. Considering the things that we're doing to these pals, like we're capturing them, we're forcing them to work for us, we're forcing them to guard us and stuff like that. Because you can get like you know turret stations and stuff like that. You can turn. You can get like a, a special ability where, um, you know, you can turn the penguin into like a rocket launcher or fire him out of a rocket launcher. And then, like, it's like it instantly knocks him out. I'm like, geez, that's a one shot deal. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Well, that's like the uh, the bird that shoots grenades out its ass or some shit. <laughs> or, uh, old boy, the little monkey who like fucking uses the submachine gun. <laughs> the little machine. Yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> that's, cr- I mean, there's, it, it, it's just like, I, I really like the fact that they were pretty much like, let's throw whatever we can at the wall, let it stick, and then fucking it just worked out. Because, like, yeah, right. I, I don't think the game is. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's just fun. And I yeah. Think Brad talked about that before. It's like, that was the one thing they, you know, the developers seem to ho- like hone in on like what, what would right. make this game fun? You know? Yeah. So in that's probably my biggest argument as to everyone's just like, it's a Pokemon ripoff. Like other than you can throw, like, I don't even think it's a parody. Not a ripoff. That, I, I think it's a parody. I don't even, I don't even think it's a parody. <laughs> If they just had the like the guns and like you could like you know shoot the 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 penguin out of a rocket launcher, maybe maybe it'd be a parody. But the fact that you know you have the full base building, you have you know a full like cooking mechanic, you have um, automation with your <laughs> your your production means. I, I think it's it, the means it may of production, started, comrades. <laughs> it may it may have started as a parody, and I, I think they. I think the fact that the really the only simulate the, the only similarities are colorful monsters, and you can throw pokeballs and catch them or uh, spheres and and catch them. 
outside of that, there is no other like. Well, the the, the pals themselves are all inspired by different Pokemon. Some some of the designs, okay, and, and, yeah. And, and, I mean, so it, yeah, well, and and, and, and that's Pokemon, that's why I think it's safe to say it is a parody because. Well, and then and then some Pokemon are based off of real animals. So can we can can National Geographic sue? Oh, oh no 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 no! Why would I mean, they I'm not arguing again. I think I think is that coming so, from? To me, <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> no, I mean everybody knows the argument between was it Dragon Quest, where you know Pokemon right, got their inspiration right. from yeah. Dragon Quest. Right. I think I think the the only legitimate argument that anyone can ever have about this game is the fact that the the base characters, like uh, the um, what do you call? Uh, I don't know the formula, the the shapes and all that that are used mm -hmm. to create the 3D design, kind of are very similar to that is used for Pokemon. Other than that, I mean they've they've changed enough to where it's its own thing, just like they did with their characters when they took inspiration from Dragon Quest. Um, so I, I think if they're gonna, if anyone's gonna argue anything, it's it's that framework that's used when developing the game to create the characters. So do we think that like Nintendo would even try to investigate or do anything if this game was not so fucking popular? I mean, I, I feel like even if they, if, they if they're just like Disney, it, uh, yeah, because Disney will go after mom and pop shops. If they were going to do it though, they would have done it years ago when it was being announced as being worked on. Mm, as a business decision, I think it's good to wait till they're making a shit ton of money and then you capture that money. Well, you just said uh, Disney goes after mom and pops. Why well, wouldn't Nintendo do the same? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, but I don't. I don't think. I, I think they would have to do it very quickly. Like they would have to do it very soon. Or what's the point? Let okay, let's piss off twenty million people. You know that think something else is already better. So like, any chance of redeeming those fans of Power World to coming back to Pokemon? you've completely isolated them because you've shut down the thing that they like. Um, or you just wait until they make all their money and then you shut it down. And I don't think, really yeah, I don't think it'd be a, a smart decision on their end to shut it down. I think it's fair for them to maybe go after them over um, copyright infringement issues or whatever. But mm -hmm. I think if they want to play it smart, they, they just sue them for that and then allow them to continue to go with it with maybe a licensing agreement. I if, they, if they really want to go that route. And yeah. Damn well we know Nintendo can definitely prove something, right? Oh, I mean, yeah, we could absolutely. say the same thing about like uh, the finals, right? And how they have stuff <laughs> that's similar to Payday. Yeah, yeah. Right? You know, anybody can do that kind of thing. In yeah. fact, if I was Nintendo, I would use the flip side and say, you know what? We can do better. Hey, ga hey guys, we implemented some of these things that you loved about mm -hmm. this. And, well, and just make themselves better. Well, I mean, that's the one of the main arguments against like Nintendo right now is that it's a game freak. That's the one that made the last Pokemon. One yeah. Of the most pre uh, recent ones where, you know, those came out just with horrendous quality. You know, they were fucking poorly optimized <clears throat> for the switch. And we all know that like, even though as old as that system is, there are developers who have made really good fucking games out of it. And the fact that Pokemon legends came out or whatever, and it was just looked so bad and played poorly. And then you just have power world that, I don't know how many developers there were. Apparently, like a lot of them didn't know what they were doing. They had to like literally contract out to like some senior developers who were willing to act as consultants. And then the game just like came out and they're like, look, we put like a couple million dollar investment into this. And, you know, I think that at first, you know, it, it was going to be seen as like, oh, it's going to be like a little cute, you know, piece of satire on Pokemon or whatever. And then people were like, oh shit, there's a lot to this game. And, you know, a lot of it is really disconnected, right? But what's there, its foundation is solid. And mm -hmm. because you can make your own fun, like essentially like that's the big part of this game is that, <clears throat> you know, the game functions better than what Pokemon Legends did. And like people just kept bringing it up. And I'm like, there shouldn't be a real debate about what has played better at launch. It's this game, you know? I mean, I don't think the developers and I don't think any indie developer really believes that, you know, at launch, a game is going to like completely crush their servers. But like, I don't think they anticipate this type of success, you know? And obviously it's was... propelled them into the spotlight. But, you know, if I'm Nintendo, this it, essentially it's like what Chris said. It's a fucking challenge to me. Like, why don't you guys take better time oh, out yeah. to make a better fucking Pokemon game than have some really small, dedicated team just be like, let's have fun with this shit. And make a game yep. that's comparable to yours, you know? 
So it it reminded me back like when Diablo when they were making Diablo two right <clears throat> and they were trying to find out sounds for the cow. There's a hidden cow level that you're not supposed to be able to find. And what they did is they walked around the uh, the development area. And they just said, hey, can you move into this recorder for me? And that's what they did. So they had no idea why the hell they were doing what they were doing. And it's almost like with this, like they said, all right, let's 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 AI create these these pals, right? All right, give me a word. Depression. Okay. You know, and now we have depression. Yeah, you know, stuff depressa. like that. Yeah, but did they ever confirm this was AI created? I'm not saying it is. I'm just... I don't... Okay. I think, very, I think they've very used... Much so, I mean, like the guy was a huge supporter of AI, but I don't think there's anything out there that my, confirms my that they were AI. that there was used like some assets right there has to be like, yeah yeah oh yeah absolutely but that's like any other games yeah. like all right first person shooter games uh how many people are probably using the same well gun people aspect? are upset about the finals oh, because more. the finals uses uh ai voices and stuff like that for their oh answers. really <laughs> but like yeah, it's really weird <laughs> but we were like you're upset about ai voice actors like you'd have one person or two people talking the entire time like they just want to save on costs because the game, you know, is the primary focal point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's... You're, like no one really talks. So who gives a shit? But like with with Power World, I still don't like understand like. Once again, this kind of like parasocial relationship that people have created with like pub developers and publishers and stuff like that. Acting like a game is just like too big to have competition. And that's essentially what Pokemon is, right? But like, if you look at Power World, it's like it's Pokemon, Monster Rancher, and some other survival game, right? It's it's an amalgamation of so many different ideas, mm -hmm. and Valheim. It just yeah, in Valheim, right? It just happens to work, right? It's that yeah. rare instance where a game like we all saw it, we all laughed at it, we're like that'll mm -hmm. be cute when it comes out, and then it just caught fire, and we're like, this is actually really solid because there yeah. because as of right now. There's nothing really connecting any of it, right? Like, we're all like, why isn't there kind of, we, you know, I think I want music when I'm playing the game, you know, because sometimes you're just kind of traveling to far distances. You're like, there's nothing going on. Yeah, and then, I like listening to Nickelback. When yeah, Nickelback. of course, dude. <laughs> Let me get some Creed on, man. While like, holding a photograph. <laughs> yeah. Let me watch some Creed as I'm flying through the air and shit like that, you know? And it's like, but, you know, you go off and fight your first gym trainer, and then it's like, all right, cool. After you complete all those, like, tutorial levels, they're like, all right, go do your thing. Do whatever you want. So we don't know why anything's actually happening the way it is. It's just, you know, essentially the yeah. survival world. I think, I think the the progression system is is nice too. It's not it's not overwhelming where you have a fuckload of objectives, um, and it allows you to freely do whatever you want. And then, like, in order to get the faster and quicker mounts, you have to go deeper into the map yep. to get to those mounts. And I, I just I I think the way they did it is is made it very I guess balanced, but not stressful either like yeah. a lot of these open world games do yeah, a lot of survival games are like all right cool here's all these enemies that will kill you you're naked so please do your best to survive <laughs> it's like yeah why is your a fucking dragon fighting me i'm I'm like level one that's level 50 like what's going on here yeah don't worry about yeah. that it's part of the experience <laughs> yeah so with the so my take on pokemon right i've i've played pokemon since day one it's just it's just been one of my staple games Ever since I've had a Game Boy, I think it was a Game Boy Color, mm -hmm. but um, it's the the formula has always been the same thing. It's this formula has been the same. There's been no real innovation since Yellow, Red, Blue, except for it's 3D now, right? There's you know, I think they introduced the bicycle somewhere along the way, uh, and then you could you know eventually fly on Pokemon, whatever. Which once again, it's a solid formula but it's been the same game for nine generations or t what a thousand Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, when, when Arceus, when, when Pokemon legends Arceus came out, I was like, hell yeah, something Completely a little more. Different. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, just literally just different, just something different. And then I was playing that and I'm like, wow, this is really cool exploration. And wow, I get to, you know, freely sneak through the grass and, you know, capture Pokemon. But I'm like, wow, that like, that's just it. Like that's, yeah. even though it is something different, it's just, freely exploring and throwing pokeballs at well, pokemon not That's only the... that not only that they 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 make you buy a whole ass second game just to get another type of pokemon right yeah well i mean it's it's kind of crazy like with with pokemon legends is that um especially like considering like nintendo's reputation for innovating their own like ips and stuff like that they always if i remember correctly like they always change it up like the way they like innovate with mario and Zelda and Metroid, 
And then it's like Pokemon's like just kind of been the same thing for so many years. Like I haven't played honestly Pokemon since like Pokemon Yellow. Like I just you know couldn't couldn't if there was like no real changes to it. I don't really see the the, the point to playing it. But I understand like its appeal. You know. Yeah, like the the leaf green and stuff like that. That was a breath of fresh air, in my opinion. While you got to play with all these new Pokemon and everything like that, you level through this new zone, and then the game ends, or so you think. And now you're playing through the original eight zones. So that was a nice nostalgia trip back. Mm-hmm. Um, not necessarily innovative, right? When you're talking innovation, we're talking the difference between Super Mario 64 and Paper Mario and stuff. Like, those are different or Mar- games. Or Mario Odyssey. Yeah. Or more, you know, they're yeah. they're different games. So I mean, it's not saying that they can't innovate, but I get what Brad's coming from. I, it, at its core, it's the same damn thing yeah. over and over. Right. Which, which is and so. then and, and then and then Power World comes out, and it's like it's like wow, there are Pokemon esque monsters, right? And you go into this world, and you realize, oh, I can murder them. <laughs> I can build my own. My, I can build my own. Um, the first thing um, this psychopath jumps on. I can. I can butcher these motherfuckers now. I can. No, no more you know, talking can, back, can, Pikachu. And it's like you know, it's like the the first time, um, like the the first time I accidentally hit someone, like hit hit another player, and like it just spawned a bunch of you know patrol guys started shooting, just mur- you know murdering me. I was like, wow, okay, that, that's that's different. That you know, that's something new. Um, and so it's just, it, it's not it's not a breath of fresh air. It's just like. A, it's it's so it's in a realm by itself that, that's and that's why i don't think it's a parody well that's right? why it's like, that's it's why i enjoy like independent titles so much is because there's like an you know obviously sometimes you cannot compete with the resources that triple a studios have right you may not be able to maintain or get to that visual level but you can be insanely creative and you know a lot that's why I like a lot of like independent titles seem to have new innovations to like their genre their respective genre so you'll see stuff like certain roguelikes being added like you know new metroidvania stuff or first person stuff and it's like holy shit that's completely different from the game that just came out and you know roguelikes have seen this massive you know surge and then you also look at like power world like survival games like that one that's a different survival title from sons of the forest from valheim it's like there's there's like actual key differences in them you know what I mean? That, that's why I like to have, I'm a huge fan of indie titles because these guys are forced to innovate. They have to do something like completely different. And even though there are similarities with what like, you know, the one being being able to capture, you know, all these different monsters or pals, you know, but they don't, they're not just there like resting in their fucking little Pokeball or whatever. They can go out and work for you. You know, you can put them to task, which I think is fucking awesome. And then you also have like, all these different things you can build to ensure like they, they optimize their own abilities and stuff like that. So I think like with power world, you know, it's, it's insane to me that, you know, anytime like a big indie game comes along, Baldur's gate three power world, that type of stuff, Hades, like it like kind of stops people in their tracks. Like that's fucking something new and fresh. And it really excites you. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, you will probably see, in the next few years, a lot of games that want to emulate Power World, you're probably going to see it. Like yeah. just like when yeah. when Hades became popular, holy sh! Like it, the the entire roguelike genre exploded, right? Like sometimes when a mm-hmm. game is so innovative or just like so exciting, like everyone's like, I want a piece of that money. Just like when Dark Souls first came out or Demon Souls, right? And then the entire Souls like genre got spawned. So everyone was like, hardcore games are fun again, even though no one really, certain people don't want to play them. It just happens to be that way. I just think like it's a point of conversation now, but I promise you there are going to be games that will emulate Power World like closely or more like closely rather than, you know, it Power World being compared to Pokemon, that type of stuff. I just think that like a lot of Nintendo fanboys or the fandom itself is probably sitting there like they're fucking ripping off, you know, Pokemon. But I'm like, shouldn't you guys want Pokemon to do better? Like, aren't you guys tired? of like playing the same type of game. Don't you want Game Freak to like take accountability for what essentially Legends look like, you know, at launch. And with like, if you guys have ever played a lot of Switch games, they don't really patch them. Like you might get one or two, but like they they essentially release like a, a fundamentally kind of, you know, worse game than they've ever released before. And then it's still sold millions because nobody wanted to take into account that like Game Freak deserved to be held accountable for pushing out a title in that state because nintendo is known for quality like the switch has like no yeah, room for error bro. Yeah. yes the switch has yeah. like no room for error dude 
Like every like you played you played Luigi's Mansion three, Jack. Yeah. Right? Oh, That's an impressive it. looking game. Dude, I love that game. That One of my play. favorites. You know what I mean? So Power World comes out and we're like, holy shit. <laughs> like, why is this so good? But also like, you know, at the same time, you're like, oh, it's like it's a you know, there's all these different ideas obviously adopted from other titles. But it's it has its own identity. You know, it's not just like, you know, it's not just Pokemon with guns. It's far more than that. Right. And if, if CD Projekt Red can be made to be held accountable, yeah. Game Freak can be held yeah, accountable. Yeah, 100%. You know, I mean, but oh, Nintendo, it's, it's, it's really hard to, like, hold Nintendo accountable because me and Brad have been like, when's the Switch 2 coming out, man? Right. Can you give me a 1080p dock, you fuckers? Yeah, I mean, that's be, that'd be like trying to call Microsoft and who do I yell at about this latest <laughs> rap Halo game or whatever, you know? <laughs> Why is Halo <laughs> Infinite lacking a fucking, uh, you know, the campaign at launch? What's going on? Yeah, I, I mean, good yeah. luck, you know, but. I, just, I, uh, yeah, go ahead. I, uh, I wish there wasn't such a major difference between um, Steam's version and Game Pass's version. Like, yeah. I, if, if I could take my world and import it over to the Steam version, I would do that now and buy the copy. Mm. Um, but the fact that I'd have to start all over again is is what's keeping me yeah, from Yeah, the going lack of a that. crossplay is kind of weird. I think that we we're, we're at a point right now where crossplay should be kind of the standard for any multi-platform game. Oh yeah. I, mean? I I I I I really hope that is a thing that's um on like on release. You know, I'm I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, you know, cuz they are a smaller company and they it is not a you know, actual produced product yet. I'm hoping that there is going to be some type of crossplay. Yeah, it's it's a reminder to everyone that it, the game is still in early access. So, yeah. I did know. read, I did read that it's so popular that their server cost right now is almost ten million half a million dollars. dollars. I thought it was more. Yeah. Well, it was, it was half a million dollars a month. Yeah. to operate. Yeah. Well, of course it is. So, man. Yeah. Here's I, their. Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead, Jack. Well, here's their roadmap. It looks like they're going to be. They're adding a um, PvP arena. PvP mode, yeah. POW arena, raid bosses for multiplayer PvE, POW trading, Steam Xbox crossplay, yep. server transfers. So that answers the... Yep. So when that happens, I might actually switch... Out. Well, it won't even matter at that point. Oh, no, it would matter because I don't think Game Pass is going to have um, dedicated servers in place like okay. Steam does. So in order for friends of mine to join me in my world i have to be online mm. whereas the dedicated servers on steam you mm -hmm. the creator of the world doesn't have to be online right, right. okay yeah, which is why so <laughs> which is why when we were like creating stuff like chris was like can i just like show up and just start building i'm like you know what man if this was dedicated <laughs> absolutely yeah. or i might lock you out <laughs> or i might it's... lock you out so you don't I don't wake up to like, what the fuck did you just do, man? <laughs> and it's and it's also a difference of thirty-two players versus four. So in in a non-dedicated server, only right. four people can play. Right. Dedicated server, up to thirty-two people. Could you imagine that first boss right. with thirty-two people, man? No, <laughs> I think we'd get built. Just an ass whooping, man. He just runs away. <laughs> I, I mean, like like I said, I think the dude, the game is just really fucking solid. And then they put out the roadmap that Jack just hinted at or talked about, and Dude, that's that's one of the big things about early access and live service titles. If you have a solid roadmap and you stick to that roadmap, I promise you everyone's going to fucking like work, like literally go back to play that game. And whatever it makes it better. P dedicated PvP stuff, people are going people have, I think people have been asking about that. And I think that, you know, once again, I, I honestly believe that the developers were like, if we get a couple million, that'd be great, and then we can kind of drip feed content, right? Now there's all this demand for it. Right now, that people are going to want certain things to happen in the game, and I'm excited because they've done a really good job so far. And with that early, with that you know roadmap, that's a level of transparency that a lot of AAA studios do not show when they put out live service titles. So, you know, they did a reverse cyberpunk. They did a reverse cyberpunk exactly. Like you I know. mean, they they're taking it's crazy because they're taking their criticism in stride too. They're like, yeah, we understand you know, people are saying this, but like they respond to everyone. You know, they're really excited about like the sales. They're really supportive of like people who are like, hey, look, man, this is obviously more people than we could potentially imagine. So there are going to be server issues, but 
I did a really good job of fixing those. Like we were able to get back in pretty quickly and stuff like that. So, I mean, right now, it just feels like Pal World is gonna keep continue to find itself probably with like greater levels of success the moment they start adding stuff that people want. Like I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if they're gonna push like a a dedicated story mode eventually, because I think people do want like a connected narrative. Because right now it's just like fight the fucking mafia boss. Like, all right, cool. <laughs> why is she riding a Pikachu with a with a chain gun? What's going on here? <laughs> like, why is he so why is he so angry and killing Brad's deer like in one shot? <laughs> we went into the fight and I was like, is Brad? I was like, how many did you throw out? He threw out like seven. They killed like seven of his fucking uh pals, right? And I had like I only threw out two. <laughs> I threw I out just- Sweep was just chunking. Dude, was Sweep just chunking. would just fucking murder that thing. I was like, oh shit. Because I thought I we did, were I thought we were done for, man. We were playing. I did have I like, two water Pokemon or two pal two water pals, and that was a terrible mistake in that fight because I was just like, threw it out. Okay, he's dead. All right. Throw out the, <laughs> oh, he did all right. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna go with my rock well, type. Let's well, this thing is done really quickly. Yeah, it's just interesting because you have like all these different like shrines you can enter that have like I mean, but you know, listen, they really do need to change like some of the the chimes and like certain music and stuff like that, because it does come off as like breath of the wild. Like mm-hmm. the, yeah. <laughs> the moment you unlock yeah. an area, I'm like, it's this fucking Zelda dude. <laughs> like, you wake up on the beach with a tablet. Yeah. It's, it's like, literally uh, a stone tablet. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally breath of the wild, but with Pokemon and guns and stuff like that, you have a glider, you know, <laughs> it's like, that you waste stamina on that. You waste stamina. Yeah. 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 Yep. You know, I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> you I mean, can climb any surface, right? <laughs> Right. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of shit here. But if you get a mount and you can fly, there's no reason to walk or any, do any of that shit anymore. You know, no. you, it is, dude. We had Will playing with us and he's like, he's like, dude, flying is amazing. Fuck walking the entire time. Cause yeah. I like literally mapped out an entire <laughs> section away from like Brad and Crystal. It's like, holy crap, I went really far just by flying yeah. out in the distance. I really like that. The stamina part, part sucks, but I yeah. mean. You can Over also flying. you can also customize that. You know, you don't have to fucking waste too much stamina flying. You can be up in the air for a long periods of time if you want to. True. True. With, with flying, I think you got up the top of the, my building in twenty seconds, it and took it took me running like a minute, three minutes, four minutes. So like when like I that. we didn't know where the ceiling was, right? So at, at first, when Chris had built his tower, um, I was like, "Damn, this, this is pretty tall." But I was kind of you can like, get pretty high. I was really impressed. <laughs> by the draw distances in this game like that's fucking insane like and then chris built you know i don't know some type of fucking he went and built like a traditional high rise wa- you know skyscraper Walmart. so we oh, went up in it that one and i was like it's far higher than what we were at in his original tower and then the draw distance i was like you can see checkpoints from here like that that type of stuff oh, by yeah. the way that's yeah. what's really enticing in this game also is that when you play an open world title and you see something cool in the distance and the fact that you can go there and travel there early on. And obviously the punishment would be your lower level than whatever pal you come across. That would just nuke you. It's really exciting to be able to do that in this game and kind of go as yeah. far as you can until you reach like a certain point where it's like, dude, you, you should be wearing like warmer clothes or, yeah. you know, uh, <clears throat> tropic Arctic gear, that type of stuff. I thought it was just, I mean, it's just really well done all around. Like, I mean, and you were right about, I want to bring up that point, Jack, where you were talking about, um, you know, how the game kind of progresses and mm-hmm. scales. It's, it's actually really well done. Like it's, oh, it's yeah. like it, the game eases you in constantly. It's like, it doesn't try to overwhelm you with information. It's like, here's how you build, right? Here's what you can do yep. afterwards. Here's how you make your base better. That type of stuff. It's all just, you know, solid. And it kind of makes it to where you don't like force yourself way ahead. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, it's just a, like like I said, you can customize your own experience. You can <laughs> create a world where you're just like overpowered because you want to explore and get to the guns quicker. You know? Yeah. But <clears throat> I just, I'm just shocked that the game is so damn good, man. Yeah. Honestly, I I do hope that the Game Pass side. Well, it depends if if the server transferring happens before they fix the issue where the world crashes every time you try to load. Right. Uh, with multiplayer on. Um. Then I'll just transfer and buy the game. Yeah. Like this is this is a game worth buying. I would not be surprised if a lot of people did that as well. They played it on Game Pass. Went all right, cool. I'm gonna fucking dedicate a lot of time to this game because I've seen a number of content creators just like put out these like crazy ass guides for stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like, dude, 
you like i want to play this like casually just kind of go back to it and just play it and see what changes they have there are people who are like dedicated to making videos on it and you know shout out to those people who do that you know dedicated like power world creators now who will be yeah. devastated if like the nintendo <laughs> shuts them down how fucking dare you they're burning their switches and stuff like that <laughs> well i mean we we played like 15 hours and like started to make it off the first island yeah and I, and and in my in my personal kind of playthrough thing i i cheated a lot and made myself super fast because i just want to see how big the map was and jesus christ it was massive yeah i did huge. not realize there's like nine islands a lot of and nooks like, and crannies a lot of caves yeah. like there's like settlements everywhere there's a lot to this game and it's very impressive that like in early access because you know it's essentially in its beta and we don't know how like i remember brandon asked he's like so are we gonna get the are we gonna buy the game if it has to transfer over i'm like i don't you're looking too far ahead man i don't think this is gonna be in like 1.0 for at least a year maybe some change i've seen i mean we're games that are in early access still right now it's been like you know eight nine years star citizen so. Well, I, they also didn't expect to make as they they also didn't expect to make as much money as they did. Oh, as fuck quickly. though, bro. So I don't know. We and, could see something. And, and the best thing about early access, and this is something that like you know a lot of people should know if if you've never really tried it out, is that the game grows with you. the the com- The developers really want your feedback for these types of games. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's community driven for 100%, sure. Hundred percent. You know, there's a game that um Brad was playing. Uh, Once human, right? I'm part of the Discord. Brad is too. Like they literally were like they had their open beta phase and I wanted a key so bad but I couldn't get one. But that phase was like <laughs> over thirty days. And I was thinking like, oh, it'll be like a weekend testing. No, they had you go run through that for like thirty straight days and it was amazing watching Brad like get to like level fifty, right? Something some some ridiculous uh, level, right? I think I think sixty was the cap. I only made it to like thirty eight or something. So like you had like they just like and they were constantly like in on their Discord like telling like hey what do you guys want to see like how do you guys there's constantly putting surveys out and you know that's like the benefit to this whole early access phase at times that you get to see a game completely change you know and, and it, for really popular titles like you're gonna see like a number of really good changes I think at the Outlast Trials is getting a number of really good changes before it's released in March so yeah I think Power World I need is, to play that one again yeah. I think, I mean, it's coming. I mean, I would just wait till March now because it's going to get like, it's 1.0 treatment. So you're getting like yeah. full release stuff. But, right. you know, I wanted to tell Brandon, like, I don't think Microsoft is going to let go of this like license with them. <laughs> like, hey, you better keep that shit on Game Pass, bro, because that's going to be, that's a, that's a, that's a sub- subscriber maker. <laughs> like you're getting I'm a sure, lot I'm sure of Microsoft's stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm going to buy them anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> now we have a Pokemon competitor. <laughs> The Power World Championships. <laughs> and then, and and then, and then. If I was Xbox... the developers, bro, for Power World, I would absolutely create Ash Catchem in the game. <laughs> Just... <laughs> catch Ashem. Catch Ash Catchem. Ash Catchem. Ash Catchem would be fucking. <laughs> you know, they should have a contest, like a, a Powell naming contest. They won, dude. Depresso's already there. There's no, you can't do anything, dude. Like, Depresso no, is that's... the. Depresso is is the best. Uh, what's Depresso's evolution like? Edge Lord or some shit? <laughs> does it, does is there get... an actual like evolution? Pro- I've seen a video where uh cat cat uh whatever apparently evolves uh, during a fight. Splice, right? It, no, it, um, it, they don't. Is that a fake? All... Yeah, the the only thing that you can do in in Power World is you can breed them. So there are yeah certain, yeah that I've seen. There 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 are certain pals that if you breed to it produces a like a new Dude, yeah a new does depresso like I created I created a uh, Anubis <laughs> yeah yeah uh, which Anubis is holy shit you want a workhorse put that motherfucker in your base yeah. dude that's true dude it's <laughs> you want to have depresso merch like like why do <laughs> <laughs> it'd be like some overweight teenager so said, uh, <laughs> depresso's evolution is anxiety yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> anxiety is that so- <laughs> i just read it wrong anxiety but it's it's spelt as a n x i a t e a anxiety 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 go sounds- Dude, as you like, as you throw them <laughs> out, right? Spicier. As you throw them out, they it's turn. always carrying a coffee. <laughs> yeah, you throw them out, but they turn to you and say, "I don't want," it, and they jump back into the fucking power ball. <laughs> it's like you son of a bitch, you're supposed to work. For they me. just, they just lay down. They call in, they call in sick. 
<laughs> it's like, where is he? He's like in his they bed. Refuse to, they refuse to eat berries or anything. <laughs> exactly. It's only pizza or pizza rolls. I don't <laughs> want Always carrying that. a blanket. Constantly calls you dad. It's like, you don't love me, dad. <laughs> it's like, Gee, get the fuck to work, anxiety. You're mad at, you're mad at your father, not at me. <laughs> you're mad at your dad. I forgive you. I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit so any closing thoughts on Power World before we jump to the next subject anybody just just good game I just I'm, I'm very impressed with the game it's 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 fun it's it's relaxing uh I mean it, it doesn't feel difficult and then you have the opportunity to customize it as much as possible if you haven't um, if you haven't played it <clears throat> game pass you know yeah game pass it's free just yeah. when you make your power world in game pass just expect to have issues loading it when you try to load it as a multiplayer world. Yeah. There's workarounds. You got a the workaround, which has been working for me, is you have to create a whole new world, load in completely, load out, and then load into your world. I'll just recustomize to like single player <clears throat> and then load in and then back out and then customize the multiplayer. Mine hasn't been working that way. Really? Oof. Yeah. Yeah, it fucking sucks. Like it's it's a horrible GPU memory leak too that happens when you do that. Yeah. But otherwise, uh, it's, it's it's a great game to me. Yeah, it's, I love it's a lot it. Of, and, it's, a, and, it's a lot of fun with people, man. A lot of fun with friends. Yeah. You know? yeah. And also, you get like King Paka, which you know I've called Bob. Like, <laughs> Cap, Capturing Bob was great. Like Brad saw him jump. Brad was like, "That's not physically possible." I'm like, "But it is though." <laughs> Bob Bob is amazing. He can do what he wants. His legs just go. <laughs> just some, just some. <laughs> bam, bam. Make him do some jumping jacks. He's got so damn chubby. Okay, so, well, Brad, Chris, any, any final thoughts? I mean, obviously, Brad Pal World um, over Pokemon. I understand. We're not talking yeah, about it. it. Like, it's just it. Like, it should be a challenge to like. It should be a wake up call to Nintendo and it, or, or Game Freak or you know the whoever makes you. those decisions. Right? It's like it's like we need to do something fun. You know, and not saying that Pokemon's not fun, but it's like got it is got to innovate. If man. it's not, you know, if it's if it's not broke, don't fix it. But if we're being outshined by people that are one hundredth of our size, it's like you know, get shinier. It's so. it's it's always interesting <laughs> because um, there was like what was the game? Was it Temu or Temtem or something like that? That was like the it was an indie developer who had made like a. a a kind of like a, a Pokemon S game, which got really good reviews, but didn't really catch on, right? Because it didn't really make too many innovations. And then Powell comes along, and we're like, "Fuck yeah, dude, that's amazing!" Let me get the butcher knife out. <laughs> Let me, I'm gonna teach you a lesson. <clears throat> Chris, you got anything? No, I'm good. No, nah? all right. So next up, as I want to talk about this, uh, this rumor that's going around because um, there have been a none of them, uh, or a number of them rather. Where Xbox oh, is talking about the Drake. Oh, uh, never mind. The Drake, the Drake pictures, bro. You chill, <laughs> you chill, big dog. Drake said he was. <laughs> I'm not gonna repeat what he said. That shit was funny. <laughs> but with, right, go on. Yeah, but with Xbox, so the rumor is is that they're going to be porting over a number of titles from their legacy library, which would be like Halo, Gears, that type of stuff, and it's going to be on other platforms. Now, all of us. We're, we're multi-platform players, right? I don't think you guys have seen the responses from some of the like Xbox console centric individuals, which has been <clears throat> pretty fucking insane. A lot of people have made like videos like denouncing like the decision to do so. But if we can be honest, the Xbox One era was a fucking shit show for Microsoft, right? Mm -hmm. I think they released a total of like six or seven IPs and only committed to their four big, the three big ones. Forza, Gears, and Halo, right? Sunset Overdrive like was a good game, but got pushed to the side. Um, I, 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 Quantum Break, same thing, right? Pause real quick. Pause real quick. Pause real quick. Um, Sunset Overdrive. So, um, the developer Insomniac, um, they got hacked, and they some of their financials got released. That game only made them a thousand dollars. Yeah, they, they profited a thousand dollars. Only made a grand off that game. <laughs> nice. But it was, but they, nice. Sunset Overdrive is a great game. Just putting I was it out like, there. Don't forget no Crackdown. One... Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, Crackdown Three was not a <laughs> Crackdown Three took six years, seven years in development, and then got absolutely shit on when it was released. But first Crackdown was amazing. I had fun oh, with that one. Had a great twist at the end too. I mm -hmm. loved the twist at the end of Crackdown. But thing is, 
is that, you know, a lot of people's responses to it have been like pretty negative. But to me, it's like, listen, if Microsoft, so, you know, Phil Spencer, president of of Xbox is going to be making an announcement next week regarding the next business decisions for Microsoft moving forward. Because Game Pass to me is like going to be their moneymaker, obviously, like the say, if you guys look up the sales between like PS5, Switch and the Xbox Series X and S, the Xbox Series X and S is lagging far behind, right? I don't know. I like. I understand why certain fans would be very upset at Microsoft for essentially turning into a third-party publisher, but to be honest, they could probably, you know, make it easier by just having those titles come first to Game Pass, and then six to twelve months later jump onto other platforms because Starfield is more than likely going to go to PS5, which is probably going to upset a lot of people, right? Because they're like, it's an Xbox IP, right? Xbox paid a lot of money to acquire Bethesda. Yeah. And then, you know, but I think like to me, if I see Halo on PlayStation 5, I'm like, holy shit, times have really changed. Yeah. Does anyone here have like an issue, like honestly, with what Microsoft's doing? Like, or do you kind of understand I, I why think, the fans are reacting that way? I think, I think your Microsoft has more PC players right now than they do console players. Yeah. And, and I mean, Xbox doesn't have it doesn't have many uh, um, IPs, and I mean PlayStation is just way ahead so with that. So is Nintendo, <clears throat> but they're but yeah. they're, but they're playing different games, right? Like PlayStation is like right. openly said we're working on console stuff. Nintendo's like console handheld. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like when Game Pass came out with their subscription service, I was like, dude, you guys are going to be the leader in that category, right? Sony had PlayStation um, Now, but it was yeah. like kind of like a complimentary thing. Like there's some, you know, things that they put on it that were, you know, third party, but it was mostly first party stuff. It was, yeah, but you also like, have to have your PlayStation on to play it, right? Play the games. Yeah. It's not PC on PC or something. I think it's on like PlayStation. I don't know if there's like an extension or something. Like that. I think there is, there might be. Yeah. I thought you can play PC games. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. Let me, I thought you can play PlayStation games through PlayStation. Now, if your PlayStation's on, cause it's essentially, um it's like stream casting yeah, it's like yeah. Well, so so for ps3 and below games you had to stream it right. that okay. was really shitty so like take uh the the first red dead redemption right super buggy super laggy i mean the whole point of that game is aiming a weapon right so it made it <laughs> extremely difficult now the ps4 and ps5 games you can download those and that was fine um but there's a reason why xbox far surpassed them in that regard yeah so like it was like you have a a model that is going to make you a ton of money, but like for those who have not followed Microsoft for a long time, like most of their investors, like the serious ones, fucking hate Xbox as a brand. Like if you like Microsoft is a multi trillion dollar company, they make most of their money through like a number of different services that they provide and mm-hmm. products. Like the Xbox brand, I I think was like a nice side excursion when it first came out. And then like Xbox 360 was really popular and a lot of people thought that the Xbox one was going to be a fucking layup. And then they had their E3 announcement, which was like, we have all these DRM like policies and shit. And we're like, fuck no, <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not touching that shit. And it, it, it just essentially scuttled it. And then there were so many bad decisions made. Like the Xbox one X came out, right. And we're like new console already. Okay, cool. And they were like, nah, it's just like a super Xbox one, but we're not going to put anything on it that's new yeah and i was like okay so why the fuck would you ever like put that out there so then phil spencer took over he's like look we have this new subscription model and i was like that's brilliant because essentially any first party title or any title that microsoft can afford which by the way turns out they can afford whatever the fuck they want oh yeah like when like when the acquisition for activision blizzard happened i think i told chris and brad i was like there is not another company that can ever pull out $69 billion. I think maybe Tencent, but they fucking suck with gaming right now. They're struggling hardcore. Elon. Elon. <laughs> oh, my God. 
What Please if, don't let him buy what any if it gaming was stuff. Tesla. <laughs> Please don't let him buy any gaming stuff. <laughs> Tesla gaming. What if the, we are what if, the, fucked. what if the Xbox was just called X? Okay? <laughs> it's just the X. <laughs> no, no, it's no, it. it's no longer an X anymore. It's just an E. <laughs> Let me just feed my fucking ego a little bit. But everything is automated. It yeah. automatically loads you. You want to play this? Game. You want to play this? Like it's Neuralink type stuff. Like you know, right. we're we're past like gaming consoles. No, we're not gonna have VR heads. It's not Apple Vision Pro. What we're gonna do? You have to insert this chip behind your ear, okay? Okay. And then once you do that, that's, you, it. that's all. Yeah. That's all just, wait, do. just wait. Just okay. wait till <laughs> you're gonna have a seizure. You... <laughs> okay. Just wait till Small hacking uh, Neuralink is gonna be a major thing. Oh. How fucked are you gonna be then, dude? Have you got the Apple Vision Pro stuff? My hack guy turn him into a fucking idiot, dude. I'm telling you, cy- yeah, cy- cyberpunk, brother. We're fucking done, dude. You guys are. They literally. Call I will like- never. He won't catch me investing into a Neuralink. <laughs> Five years later, so guys, you get one. But the same. They tag <laughs> me, bro. His eyes are little, little white so, noise. So I made a. So I made it. So I fucked up. <laughs> That's Jack's first thing. So I fucked up. I got the Neuralink right, and uh, I'm blind. So <laughs> how, how are you guys doing? <laughs> Uh, my feet are on backwards somehow. Or... <laughs> I don't understand. I can't walk forward anymore. <laughs> but I tell you what, though, I love Elon. <laughs> How about you guys? I didn't realize walking was a DLC. <laughs> that, that was a mistake. <laughs> Microtransactions. Hey, you would have guessed, man. Microtransactions uh, everywhere. <laughs> man, my body's gonna die, but you're gonna have that Neuralink with my memories on it. And you're gonna... just gonna put me in a fucking robot. Five more years for forty nine ninety nine. Oh, what We're is gonna, this shit's gonna be just like on time? Yeah, on time. Yeah, I was like, what? I was like the Justin Timberlake movie. <laughs> I'm like, bro, if, uh, it, if it said on my forearms, like you have 24 hours, so I'm not extending that, bro. That's a promise. No. That's a guarantee right there. Right. I'm robbing a bank. What are you don't, talking about? Don't fucking lie to me, bro. You said hey, we're at war right now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm kind of confused. And I, I like when I saw like the different social media like reactions to it, most people were like, all right, cool, man. You know, it's a smart move by Microsoft, right? Clearly, Game Pass is like a big seller, and and honestly, it it does give them time, you know, to kind of put out games from the first party studios because they have been lagging. Like we're almost what five years now into like the PS5, Xbox Series X, and like what's been pushed out by Xbox has been really minimal, right? This year should see like Avowed, Hellblade Two, um, what else is like a, another one that was coming out? I know Fable's like a couple years off. I know Elder Scrolls Six is like ten years off. We're not getting there for a fucking while, but like, right. it, it's kind of like like if I'm Microsoft, I'm like, look, man, like we can still have our Game Pass investments. Like us being on other platforms is beneficial to us because, I mean, profit sharing, right? We're gonna make a you know Call of Duty is gonna remain third party because a lot of people were pissed off that call like you know Call of Duty Activision Blizzard got bought up and we're like, what happens to COD? Is it going to be on Xbox, Game Pass, that type of stuff? To me, it's like that's a benefit to the player. If I don't have to pay $70 for the game that gets released every fucking year, right? I'm yeah. good with that, right? It incentivizes you to <laughs> yeah. play shit like Madden, you know? Like, right. at, the, at the same time, it, a lot of these people don't, I say these people, a lot of consumers who aren't in the know, right? When they buy something, they see, okay, I can spend four hundred dollars on a console and just pick up Call of Duty once a year versus spending a fifteen hundred two thousand for a PC, right? That yes, it has a lot more uses, but they don't care about that. My dad doesn't my dad's PC shit, it might still be running Windows XP for all I know. I mean, he doesn't care. Windows Vista, you know? baby. <laughs> you know, it, it's and that, that's not a knock on him. It's just he doesn't care about that type of stuff. So your dad's never gonna watch this. Just go and talk your See, shit right now. <laughs> that's true. See, here's the thing. Like you old bitty. More popular. He ain't watching. <laughs> <laughs> See, here, here's the thing. Like there are games that I would try because it's free on Game Pass that I would have never tried if I had to buy it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Hundred percent. And I think, like, you know, it's an incentive for, like, the big games, like, the big AAA titles. Like, you're going to get Indiana Jones this year from Machine Games. You're going to get all these other big games. And you also get, like, games like Power World, right? Just having Power World there, you're probably like, oh, it's an early access. Let's, let's take it for a spin. And then you're like, I might go flip and buy this on Steam because I might it might run better on Steam, right, on a different platform. That mm-hmm. type of shit. So there's benefits to Game Pass. Like, I, I to me personally, I'm like, it's got to be an insane cost to be making all these different deals with 
you know, massive publishers to put their game on their first day one, like Capcom had Exo Primal on there. I wonder how much that costs. But like Game Pass, like PlayStation Plus is like you only have like it's like Netflix also, like you only have it there for like a year and then it's gone. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So there is downsides to it, but first party stuff, like it's there for like for as long as I want it to be. But I don't see like the real downside to Microsoft going third party. It's not like Sega when Sega fucking like really tried to punch above its weight class against like Xbox and PlayStation. And they were like, you're fucking done, kid. Like the Dreamcast, which, by the way, great system, loved it. Like just was not going to match like the momentum because of the cost of like Xbox and PlayStation at the time. You know what I mean? So now you're here and it's clear that like and I don't want to be a dick to like, you know, any Microsoft fans out there, but it's clear that like what Xbox has done has been kind of underwhelming in terms of their IPs. It's been like we dude, you you literally I think like 2019 they announced like 25 studios had joined Xbox. I think we've seen games from like three of them. Mm-hmm. That's fucking crazy. And then you still went back to the wall like they were still talking about oh, there's a new Gears coming out. I'm like, guys, there's got to be something new that Xbox can put out. Like you bought like you had to buy Ninja Theory to get Hellblade. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and I expect Hellblade 2 to remain on Game Pass while also being available to buy six months later to a year later. You know what I mean? So you're going to have some exclusivity there. And I don't think people should be upset about that. But like, dude, it was crazy. Like some people were like making all these videos showing how they're depressed. Some people had accounts. They're like, I got to turn my account off or shut it down because I've been trying to give Xbox benefit of doubt. I'm like, dude, this is a smart business move by them. Mm -hmm. I imagine the cost to run that fucking platform, dude. I would be losing my shit because I'd be interested. I'm the leader. I'm the leader right now, dude. I'm the guy. so I've I've always felt Xbox being the 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 accessible platform. That's I've always viewed Xbox that way. Mm-hmm. You know, PlayStation was like the powerhouse serious gamer platform, right? It's, they they have their thing and they try to be the best at it. And then Nintendo is for kids, but then Xbox is like we have I don't remember so on the 360 they had like six different versions of the Xbox that was like two hundred dollars <laughs> Xbox Arcade they, which is yeah like, yeah so that was the first one that I had no hard so drive like, or whatever <laughs> right it was like it was accessible right and they they have like every like third party accessory known to man for the Xbox, Xbox Arcade and, was fucking crazy dude and, 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 <laughs> and the Xbox Arcade where you just like twenty dollar games and then uh for your subscription with xbox live you got two free games you know every month it was just it, like everything just compounded to xbox being just the the budget friendly um brand and then the xbox one came out and they kind of shit on everything and then i don't think they really recovered but then but then once again they they come out with the the game pass and i'm like like this is probably the best deal for everyone always and people get mad at it for some reason i'm like they're like i don't feel like there's any downside downside from a consumer no. perspective no. it might it might absolutely no, drown it might drown microsoft out of the gaming space completely if they mismanage it Correct. Right? if yeah. they just if they just buy everything and not do anything with it right they, they might just crash and burn but at least we get to enjoy cheap entertainment for a few years that's what i'm saying like, like that's, like, that's yeah, worst case scenario i'd be interested in knowing the people the people that are complaining uh, who are Dude, Xbox the, console owners? Like, wh- what games are they playing on brother, your system right brother, now? I'm telling you, it's the people who create parasocial relationships with companies, mm-hmm. knowing that if, like, <clears throat> if we had, as like the gaming community had just accepted that gaming is a business, and these are business decisions, and they're being made at the top because the dollar, the, you know, the literally the the dollar. Um, like how, whatever we're making in terms of like our totals and shit like that, like all that matters to them. Like they don't give a fuck about like certain consumer decisions. Dude. They're just trying to make as much money as possible. And game passes, in my opinion, like a fucking cash cow. Yeah. If, if, oh, I, if I, if I, if I can like, if like, if I'm smart, if I'm Microsoft and I'm like, look, this decision is going to be fucking attacked by a number of different like console warriors. Right. You can hear like PlayStation fanboys just celebrating in the streets right now, fucking just spiking down <laughs> Molotovs and shit. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Nintendo's yeah. like, we don't give a shit because they're like a siloed community. They just kind of right. come out. But- they come out of their little fucking hubs. They're like, <laughs> days work, boys. <laughs> fucking right. dip out. But, but like, like if you're if if you're an Xbox fanboy and you're arguing against this decision, I'm interested in knowing what you're playing on your system right now. Like, are you playing Call of Duty? 
That's available every fucking where. All right, what's your argument? Are you playing? Are you Overwatch? playing just Halo? Are you, what? Where do you fucking plan to to argue that this is a dumb decision? Yeah, well, even Halo's on freaking the Master Chief. Oh, exactly. On like what? So. There's there's nothing that they're playing right now probably that is only exclusive to like we, we Xbox. Have, I, we have, I definitely see it the other way. So PlayStation Two, Xbox. I could definitely see Spider Man, Last yeah. of Us. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I could see that frustration, but no, like, I. <clears throat> There's no legit argument. Like because yeah. now, like it because if they push strictly into Game Pass as a publisher, it is clear that Microsoft has accepted the fact that they really are not trying to complete compete with Sony and Nintendo in the console space, right? They want they to can't. Be pub- but here's the thing: Microsoft should look at it like this. I just acquired two of the most popular publishers. By the way, if you actually look this up, before they acquired Bethesda, I think they were top twelve. When they acquired Activision Blizzard, that was a top three fucking publisher. You literally acquired the guy behind you. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're like, fuck the competition. You jump, hop in the backpack. You're with me now. So like now, you're a mega publisher, no matter how anyone sees it, right? You have the highest, you have the best purchasing power. And me personally, I think what Phil and that team can do is probably take some of these <laughs> fucked up publishers right now. You know, Ubisoft, for example, right? And pull them into heel. You know what I mean? And kind of turn their cultures around and make them like, you know, kind of bring back certain IPs and and just make them better. You know what I mean? Because like right now, it was obvious that Microsoft did, had so many different IPs but didn't do anything with them. Yeah. But with like Game Pass, it's like we can do whatever we want. Like we have the opportunity now. Yeah. So instead of worrying about like whether or not a new Xbox console is going to do anything or how its sales are going to be because... You really didn't give a shit because I don't know if you guys paid attention with the Xbox One stuff. They stopped reporting sales for like the Xbox One like three and a half years in. They were just like, fuck it, man, PlayStation One. They're done. just like, done, whatever. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Same thing here. Like, you're <clears throat> lagging. Like, the Switch is, uh, how old is it now, Brad? T- almost 10 years now, right? We're about a decade sure, in. Sounds right? Great. right? And the Switch is like, just leaping still. I, and I still can't you know, imagine it in my head if I'm like Microsoft, like how the fuck are we still not outselling the switch for Christ's sakes? Like we've put out so much shit for the, the series X and stuff. And we've tried to incentivize people and people are like, well, I can just have a PC and just have ultimate game pass. And not only do I get to like get to play games on PC, I can go cloud streaming. And because every one of your games moving forward is going to be on PC, dude, there's this, 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 this decision to me is a it's, fucking it's, layup. It's, yeah, it's, it's a layup. Easy, yeah, it's easy. And 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 these kind of acquisitions that you were mentioning earlier is is this? It happens all over the place. Yeah. Uh, Oracle in the tech industry, yeah. they're they're take they're, they Christ, acquire dude. everybody. Christ. Disney in the fucking entertainment industry. I mean, they acquire every fucking. Have you seen Disney's list of of companies they have? Oh, dude, and Oracle's list of companies. Like Microsoft is, I think what Microsoft is doing is smart. It's going to be better for their business, and it's only going to improve sales and because and profits. If, if I'm an investor in Microsoft and I say, "Dude, I'm not a fan of the Xbox brand. What are you doing for me?" It's like, well, we've required these two major publishers. How about we just start to kind of dive into publishing ourselves, and we stay the leader in the clubhouse for subscription services? I'd be like, "Fuck yeah, that's a great idea." Right, because then like all these other companies have to come to me, like Nintendo and Sony, if they want certain titles to be made available on their platform. So the profit sharing that Activision Blizzard and Bethesda saw are now all Microsoft's profits. It's fucking smart. Like yeah. if you know goddamn well that consoles are not gonna make you money anymore, like they're making money for Sony and Nintendo. Dude, publishing's where it is. I mean, I know Sega saw it too late. <laughs> Sega was so desperate. They were like, fuck it, Dreamcast time. And we're like, I don't know if you know this, bro, but the Sega, was it the Sega CD or Sega Saturn didn't sell too we well? We don't like, do CDs no more. <laughs> we don't do that shit no more here. We got DVDs. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, your game on Blu ray? Like, if you weren't willing to innovate like Nintendo did, like, Nintendo fucking failed in the first two years of a console generation with the Wii U. They were like, fuck it. Switch time. Wii's. Yeah. I was like, the Wii was so successful. They're like, we have a new Wii, but you have a tablet, which is sick. But it's like, I don't know what you're going to run on it, honestly, how it's going to work. And like, well, it bombed you out, have boys. A mini-map. Yeah, now you have a mini map. <laughs> Dude, you guys want to play Tropical Freeze? Now there's bongos here, right? <laughs> now you tap them. There's innovation. Fuck you. <laughs> and then they're like, all right, cool. It bombed out the Switch. 
I feel like I always say this to people. Down. I'm like the Wii U legitimately was the fucking prototype for the Switch. And it, oh, yeah. Nintendo knew it. Switch is amazing. Right? It's a fucking it's a fantastic console. Nintendo nails it. Nintendo is the they're obviously the lead, right? With fucking everything handheld stuff. So mm-hmm. why not? Microsoft I, like I, I feel like we're at that point where Microsoft kind of understands it. But like they have to realize, like, dude, your console comes out. You guys talk about being the most powerful console, and then you take so long to put shit out for it that it's just like, it's a doorstop. <laughs> People yeah. are using it for other things, man. Like, we yeah. <laughs> come on now. Well, you can see where their priorities are. 100%. Dude, I'd be, I would hate to have that job if I was like Phil Spencer because you do have a fervent fan base. I don't know if you guys ever watched like any of the E3s, but they used to have like people in the crowd, like the hype people, like, X. <laughs> <laughs> like Xbox and shit, <laughs> wearing the Xbox T-shirts, and I was like, "Ugh, man, you guys have not put out a lot of games." <laughs> like, I just want to point that out, dude. Sony's like, "Hey, man, you guys want Last of Us Part Two remake? We're just putting a remaster. I don't give a shit." <laughs> like, "Yay, Spider Man Two! Hooray!" All that shit. We're like, "What's Xbox doing?" We got Halo. Just <laughs> dead, twitching in the corner. <laughs> we got. Hey, did you know? Did you, you know we still have so Halo? Good. You guys know? St- have you got- guys tried Crackdown Three yet, dude? When Halo Infinite came out, I like I was hyped. The multiplayer was really good, and then like the game came out, and I was like, "Where did what did we do here? <laughs> what happened here?" And then, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, we're just it's just it's just the weirdest thing because like seeing people make videos, that's like when people burn their jerseys. Like I understand, I get it, right? You know, you're a massive fan. You don't want to like uh you know, see a rival fan base succeed or whatever, or you get really upset. <gasps> but I'm not burning like a three hundred dollar jersey, man. <laughs> That shit's expensive, bro. <laughs> no. <laughs> like someone literally once the once the announcement, once the rumors had come up, like people legitimately were going to games uh was it um GameStop and selling their fucking Xbox Series X's. Okay. I'm like, guys, I don't Okay. You know, and that's fine. Here's my thing, right? This isn't like a fuck I'm not the airport, bro. You don't have to announce your departure. Like fuck right off. Dude. I don't give a shit about that. You know what I mean? I'll just, I'll just all right, enjoy all right. and continue yeah. playing the games. Yeah. Uh, let them, let them enjoy good. that fifty dollars credit they're getting. Yeah, hundred percent. Like it's, uh, it's like the weirdest thing. Which, which won't even buy a fucking game because you know, you know damn well, like you're doing it for engagements and impressions. I totally understand that if you're a content cre- creator slash influencer, whatever. But you know damn well you're probably popping open Game Pass right now to play like something that's new. Like it feels so farcical at times, but there are people who take it so seriously. You can probably go to the Xbox subreddit. It's probably burning down right now. Like, why would Phil do this to us? <laughs> but there's also probably, mm-hmm. like, really intelligent Xbox fans who are like, yeah, it sounds like a good idea to me, man. I don't even use my Series well, X. So, my biggest flaw in their, in their like, reasoning, I, I guess, it's like, if it was a physical game, like, like if, I don't know, if, if the Game Pass was, like, handing out games to play, right? And it's like... <laughs> like Redbox? Well, yeah, like, if, if it's that, maybe, maybe. But it's but it's a streaming service. It's not like they're just going to run out of It's fucking digital, guys. It's digital. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Like, hey, you going to deliver that game to me? <laughs> Get sh- bring that bitch over there, Gamefly. No, it's, it's, Xbox, Xbox was only worth it when you were standing in line at GameStop waiting for a release. Halo 2, baby. Dude, Halo 2 is yeah. coming out, brother. So like, I, don't, I did it for Battlefield, too. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so they're, I mean, they're literally just angry because someone else gets to play it eventually. It's yeah. like, it's like, why? Like, like, it doesn't, it doesn't hinder your ability uh, to play man, it at all. When people yeah. were bitching so much about like Spider Man 2 and like certain things being exclusive because it's a Marvel property, I'm like, guys, exclusives, right? <clears throat> help drive innovation in the industry and like it helps you kind of differentiate you know, your SKUs and stuff like that. Like, otherwise, everything is the same. So if everything's like, if you see like an entire, like, bunch of different brands and there's no differences between them, like, who gives a shit about, like, what I buy? You know what I mean? So that, therefore, you now have three (laughs) different massive players in the gaming space, all doing different things, really. And they're all successful in their own way. So, like... Yes, I think like, you know, maybe Sony should, you know, stop trying to fucking make Final Fantasy exclusive. Like, holy shit, they have like a chokehold on Square Enix. They're like, or just buy Square Enix. <laughs> yeah, just buy, just buy them. <laughs> dude, I'm serious. I'm, I'm being, me and Brad yeah. are being fucking honest, dude. We're like, dude, just buy them now. Like, why not? Final Fantasy VII Rebirth yeah. and the other, uh, that the, uh, it's other sequel, the trilogy is never going to come to Xbox. Like, but Sony it does has, come to PC. It does come to PC, right? Right. But it's like a year and a half, two years right, later. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know? 
like play like playstation uh, has like the right idea right what they're doing is that they're putting out ps5 games and then a year later or six months later they're putting on pc releasing yeah right now you can okay. play it double dipping they're double dipping how exactly dare how dare they right you make your money how you make money i ain't gonna say shit to you right xbox is the same way they're just like do we have game pass Sony can't compete with that because they don't have the fucking money to compete with them. Like Microsoft's just like, it, like if I can buy Activision, Bethesda, right? What's stopping them from buying like EA, Rockstar, Ubisoft, all these different different billion dollar companies? Please buy WB. Please, wait, or at least the rights to the games or something. Because WB was another... supposed to sell their fucking <laughs> IPs years ago. I remember that, and they were like, "Nah, dude, fuck that." Noise. What's their latest one? Uh, well, suicide, suicide Squad. squad. Mm-hmm. Is it yeah. Suicide Squad? Yeah, that's what I thought. But I just, I just want another Shadow of War, or or, or a game with the Nemesis system. I just, which I, in which WB <laughs> patented those fucking dickheads. Right. I just, I just want, I want that system in any other game. It's just, it, I that love that. One of my favorite, dude. When Shadow War came out, what 2019? God, it's been a long time, bro. Been a long time. I don't know if you yeah. played. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, it might have been sooner before yeah. that. It was like. Elite, it, it was before 2018. Oh, damn. Because it was yeah. before I moved to Florida. Because it was only on the PS4 when it came out. I don't see WB selling anything primarily because of the success Not of Hogwarts Legacy, Legacy, which was like oh, the yeah. best selling game last year. So they're probably like, fuck you guys. <laughs> we'll put as many tra- microtransactions out there as possible. <laughs> Next Harry Potter game, it's going to have the Nemesis system in it. <laughs> oh, that'd be dope. <laughs> that would be dope, dude. <laughs> Why not? Don't fucking it's let just that other damn... students that yeah. you have to just <laughs> don't let down. That in the, in the, in the... Oh man, <laughs> it's another Snape. There's like multiple Snapes. Like fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> it's just all. It's all the professors of at, at Hogwarts. You As your woman, fighting. a professor's ass. Another professor pops up. I remember you. Like... <laughs> a whole bunch of legacy That's shit. Funny. I just always find it funny when like console wars like happen. Like the conversations occur. I'm like, guys, it makes no sense. Play as you want to play, but like these parasocial relationships, just they're not healthy, man. Like they just, it's got to be weird to some people for you to be like, man, I support Xbox only. And I'm like, why? <laughs> I support only PlayStation. I'm like, bro, just, you know, Game Pass is now like kind of like here, man. Everyone can play everything. Fuck you, Microsoft. And, I'm not buying and, your shit anymore. All right, Jesus. <laughs> well, so that, that's what I was kind of getting at with like my dad earlier, right? So if, say, we'll take Call of Duty, right? And Call of Duty comes out and they say, we're only going to be on the Xbox now. My dad is not going out buying an Xbox just so he can play Call of Duty. Yeah. It's just not happening. You'd be surprised at how many people would. Though. So yeah. A lot of people would. Oh, yeah, like, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just. And then and then they sell it on other. Pl- they wait for everyone to buy the Xbox. <laughs> Dude, that was that was the whole thing with Tomb Raider or Rise of the Tomb Raider. I remember when like Microsoft like had showed it at the Xbox E3 showcase and they're like, oh, shit. People were like, what the fuck? Tomb Raider is an exclusive now. And so everyone lost their mind. And then it was it turns out it was like a year exclusive. It that just doing that for Microsoft scuttled that game sales. When it came out for PlayStation, it like tripled. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, people were that petty, dude. So like I was wondering like how Starfield would be received because, you know, Bethesda has you know notably been a third party, you know, and they publish almost all of their games on every other platform. So like, you know, now like I think like what didn't Elder Scrolls like four or Oblivion wasn't that like timed exclusive <laughs> on Xbox, right? And then it came to PlayStation eventually, if I, I remember, remember correctly. But like you you now have Starfield and people are like, okay. I promise you, like, watch the reviews for Starfield when it comes out on like on PlayStation. Like, watch it just be like beaming. Like, this game's amazing. It's the best game I've ever played. It's like, what the fuck you guys were just hating on this thing just before? This game was boring. It's dog shit. Trash. It's just the weirdest thing. You know? And every time I have like a conversation with like a friend of mine who's like primarily like Nintendo, they're like, dude, Nintendo doesn't care, man. Nintendo's just like Like, let me count my money in the corner and make good games. Except for Pokemon. But Except for Pokemon. Never Pokemon. <laughs> I just wanted to get that out there and get you guys' thoughts on it. They're going to come out with a game next year, Poke World. <laughs> Fuck that, man. Pokemon World. True. Pikachu's wearing a bandana now. Pikachu has a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> and when he fires the shotgun, be fun now? it launches it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be fun if they come up with a uh, uh, like a DLC or something where it's like Pal versus Pokemon. Oh, dude. So oh, the God. only reason, from what I've read, that like Game Freak even <laughs> gave a shit about Pal World was because that guy made a mod about like about Pokemon and Pal World. And then within, like I think, like less than 24 hours, 
game like game freak was like fuck that take that down right now or you're done and then the guy <laughs> like, uh, like they literally marvel went after the guy oh yeah it's gonna be like marvel versus Capcom, where you got power <laughs> world and power yeah versus- Oh, Pikachu, I Pokemon. choose you. It's like fucking. I forgot the little hedgehog's name. It's literally like a fucking lightning hedgehog, and they send him out with a shotgun. It's like attack. <laughs> <laughs> like even if they wanted to, six, why don't go. they just collab with them and then make like a uh, if they got to make like a Smash Brothers version? <laughs> the thirty hot six was especially effective. <laughs> like <laughs> critical damage with that fucking buck <laughs> with buckshot. <laughs> oh no, it's it's just interesting. How like all this kind of came about, and then you know, Power World successful Xbox is like the whole gaming like ecosystem is changing, and I think it's for the better. Let it. I don't understand why people are so fucking mad about it, man. It's just really funny because like reading the like responses to it, they're like, "Well, I'm selling all my Xbox shit, bro." I'm like, "Bro, that's like free merchandise, man. That's good shit. (laughs) Why don't you sell it? That's a nice shirt." Like, if if Halo comes out on the PlayStation, though, hundred percent, I'm picking it up. That is going to sell on the PC. That yeah. (laughs) <laughs> um, well, I so I have it on P, but I, I, I mean, Ken knows this. I play, I've played Halo forever, yeah. right? And if Chris, that Chris came played out it competitively and, uh, uh, for a while, <laughs> um, but if I could, especially if you have the option to stick to just PlayStation players, yeah. right? When you play online, you get to play with new oh, so people. You, you can bully them and shit. You ask. I want to bully the hell Bro, out of these. No. <laughs> I don't know if I ever told Jack this, but when Halo Four came out, I was super excited. Because, like, Halo's, like, one of the only first-person shooters I'm okay at. So, like, I was like, Chris, dude, get this game. He's like, I don't know, man. I haven't played it since, like, you know, Halo 3 I really liked. And, and so we hopped on, and I went 34 and, like, 8. Chris went 46 and 2. And I was like, what the fuck do you mean you're rusty at this game, dude? He's like, I don't know, bro. And he's like, I was like, what is this bullshit? <laughs> yeah, the time we were just playing Call of Duty, and I was like, I don't want to play COD anymore. Like, I want to try out something else. And then I watched him just wipe a lobby. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> this is fucking annoying. I mean, at that point, I was only like five years removed from competitive play. So I, I, I do want to see Gears of War hit PlayStation. Oh. Nowadays, I get smoked. I I, not, I do want to see Gears of War hit PlayStation. That's one of the bigger rumors is that like a legacy title, <laughs> Gears of War, is going to hit PlayStation, which would be interesting. Because I know Gears is like really popular, but like I don't know if it's... I know it's like one of Microsoft's big three. But like we're at the point where it's not so jarring anymore to see Xbox titles on other platforms because Minecraft Legends was on Switch and PlayStation, right? And you know who knows? I mean, I think like with Death Stranding, it's a no, that wasn't PlayStation Studio. I think it was like published by Five Hundred Five on PC. But you know that type of stuff would be cool. I, if I was PlayStation, I'd be like, yeah, man, let's throw fucking Days Gone on Xbox. Why not? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> games completely you off topic. Games you don't care about. Good. But uh, this is, uh, have you guys seen what they're gonna release for uh, um, Rocket League? No skins. No. Uh, no. They're doing a, a Mandalorian Mayhem set. Of course cool. they would. Yeah, Dude, I'm gonna. They, I'm, I'm, I'll be buying that. I, I'm gonna... I, th- I think it's fucking crazy that Rocket League will put out all these different skins like fucking cars and the Mandalorian stars all that shit, <clears> and not update the fucking game to Unreal Engine Five. Just putting that out, Psyonix. You know, you know fucking care about your game well yeah the problem is they put out the skins right and it's for like the merc which you know four percent of the entire you know population uses play for shits and giggles my guy you play the merc well that's what i'm saying you know that's when you just don't give a shit you know oh man i just i can't i I fucking hate what psionics has done what fort what epic has done with like rocket league they they were like hey man we're making rocket racing cool man it's fantastically awful it's literally like the most basic kart racer and skins are like 30 dollars that's and, and they're like oh it'll translate over to rocket League. It's like, free, i don't though. fucking care dude that's and the there same. was a lot of clickbait it's, it's the same six hitboxes you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. unreal engine 5 <clears throat> i assume should be quote you know should be new physics engine so like we can get actual hitboxes for every car instead of you putting out a new car every fucking season that's essentially not better than the octane or the fennec so who gives you yeah. shit yeah the skins are for the uh octane and the fennec yeah like okay congrats i guess you know what i mean or else well, the i'm new... gonna be that idiot buying the skins for this one at least well i mean i hope i i hope in rocket league 2 you get to build your own car and you know never have to actually <laughs> play soccer can you have, can you imagine that'd I, be pretty I, interesting though. i honestly think that with rocket league right now 
if if they didn't have a pro scene, if it didn't have RLCS, Rocket League would have went the way of um Paragon. I think Epic would have fucking dropped it. And then I would have been so butthurt. And then we just posted the assets on fucking uh, on their website and been like, Dude. do you guys want to build your own Rocket League, bro? <laughs> I was butthurt about Paragon. They would have only opened an old wound if they did that with and Rocket then, League. And then they brought it back. And I think they sold fucking the, um, the, re- the, the remade or whatever it was for Paragon on Epic on their store. Mm. Like imagine. Did they? I think they did. Imagine like slapping a, your fan base in the well, fucking on Steam. I, no, although when they so they they released their op, their open uh their source code to the uh yeah. community. And then there's like 20 different versions of this game now, all titled different things and there's only two of them that actually uh gained traction. I, I know one of them was released on Steam for free. Yeah, but you you played the other one, right? You were like invited to like your, dude, your it access. sucked. It dude, sucked so ima- bad. Dude, imagine imagine you were a massive fan of the fan base like Jack was. And they said, fuck it, man. We're just going to like, you guys can make your own game. It's like, but the game was fine as is. It was good. It's actually probably because Jack was a fan. Yeah, they're they're probably right. They're like, who's this Jacqueline Cruel guy? (laughs) Yeah, I can't believe he's playing. Oh, he streams too? Okay, we we can't have this on stream. Oh, he streams it, but he's not getting the numbers we need to sustain. They're like threatening you in an email. It's like, you have to get 5,000 people to watch it or I'm going to kill this game. It's like, oh. dude, you're like holding a puppy up with a fucking revolver. It's like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Either you get 5K or this gets fucking 5K. You know what I mean? I mean, I understand the business decision behind it. Like, if if they hadn't moved all their developers over Bro, to their I, cash cow, l- listen, Fortnite I, might not have been what they it, listen. It is I now. I don't because like Epic is a multi billion dollar company with a fucking engine that is used by. Everybody. But this was before yep. Epic caught a lot of traction. Like Paragon, the death of Paragon is was the 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 snowball Epic rolling is, to Epic, what Epic, Epic became. Sti- Epic was still. This is before annoying. Epic had a store. This is before um, Fortnite was a thing, and and Fortnite only had that adventure mode, whatever the fuck it's called. That was don't, it, Brad? Is that your favorite don't, thing? Don't do it, man. Yeah. Don't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> it was before all that and and when they when they they removed paragon to be able to move all their developers over to fortnites and and honestly fort that was probably their best decision it's as much as i hate that they got rid of paragon i think that's the best decision they put paragon made. in fortnite i mean geez they put everything they could have done that they could have done that i mean that. dude listen they've made a racing mode They've made a yep. karaoke mode. I'm not going to call karaoke with well, like rock band. Rock band. They made a rock <laughs> band mode. They've made Lego Fortnite. So uh-huh. I assume like next they'll make a Dota. Well, here's the thing is is any game that you put out as a developer, you, you better just count on Fortnite putting a version of that in their game. Oh, fuck yeah. Like what's that up or whatever the hell that game was called? Oh, yeah. going That up. ended up on Fortnite within yeah. a week. Yeah. People made it in the game. Dude, mm-hmm. I... I it's it's gotta suck man because you have all these different creators who like go into these like creative modes and they make like these amazing mods and they're like yeah okay like epic owns that now get the fuck out of here (laughs) oh yeah thanks for bringing this to us thanks for bringing prop hunt to us you fucking nerds (laughs) they should create a kind of incentive program uh, for creative mode like if you create something that's used by x amount of people we'll give you this much listen we'll just hire you but we'll never put you on the game that you want to make we'll put you on like something you'll never want to play <laughs> well, well i mean make a paragon that doesn't exist i mean do the same shit that twitch and kick and 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 affiliate programs do is is you get a small percentage very small percentage yeah with epic they're like yeah man here's a here's your a hundred dollar check so don't spend that all in the same place champ all right <laughs> it's like in fact <laughs> use it on the store yeah please. use it on the store right now <laughs> right. here's a 17 dollar i don't, I don't know store. listen you want the like the ninja turtles right now are on sale so that's about a hundred dollars <laughs> well can you imagine though hey, like let, think of it let's like give you the check let me just buy <laughs> these for you and gift you them <laughs> think of this though right like all right you Create an incentive program for creative uh, creative mode, um, but now anything that comes into that is now your can IP. You, can you imagine and, like someone from well, Epic listening to this? They hear Jack and they're like, "That's a good idea." It's like let's not. And, well, here's the thing. Let's not now. Now stuff. you have you have now you have free ideas. Okay. Now, what if somebody puts something into this creative mode that actually turns into what could be a potentially whole ass new game that they could put out? And they absolutely bury you behind it. 
It's like, hey guys, I remember when I gave Honestly, you that idea. They're like, hey, when I gave you that idea, <laughs> you it's got, a business. They're like, hold on. First off, you got free skins. You can't talk about this. You signed an NDA. <laughs> How many times do we talk about some great ideas, but we don't go and pose it to some we, company or start building on it? There's we, probably a lot of people that do that. We put Jack's like this, and we put you in Rocket League, Jack. You're one of the eggs. You can't see it, but you're there. All right. How fucking dare you talk bad about us as a company? You, you know well, how we came up with the the faces that are in the stands? That's the shape of your head. It's you, and, brother. Uh, <laughs> You're I'm just, just looking the opposite direction, so you can't see your face. <laughs> Don't you look away from me. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there have been more than enough times where we come up with these ideas, right? And, hey, why don't we put this to a company? No fucking way Microsoft hasn't thought of that before. And they just can't find a way to monetize it correctly. I mean, you know what well, I mean? I mean, it's, it's, it's why not incentivize it a certain way? to Because right. people aren't going to put themselves in front of big companies like that. So, all right, now you have this creative mode that you're incentivizing these, these I just, potential developers. I just developers. want to see Jack just sitting there with a piece of paper. So anyway, I got this I got this thing I got to <laughs> say to you guys. First off, <laughs> I, my name is is Brad Shit. This is Jack. You're fired. <laughs> Get the fuck out. <laughs> what about my free skin? <laughs> First off, find his account and delete it. <laughs> it's part of your layoff package. <laughs> Dude, oh, that would be the worst thing, dude. A severance package of skins. <laughs> with all the I fucking, mean, with all the layoffs in the gaming industry, dude, if I ever saw that, I would not ever blame somebody for beating up this fucking like major executive <laughs> in the street. Four thousand V Bucks and yeah. <laughs> Listen, pictures of NFTs. Your severance package is gonna be fairly robust, okay? You're gonna get paid for three months, okay, because you were here for three years. Right, right. But it's all gonna be V Bucks. Hold on. No. And hear me out. We're going to throw in some Rocket League skins and Rocket Racing skins. We're very generous with this offer. Like, hold the fuck on. It's like, we know you don't can't. Don't forget. Don't forget. We're going to give you your 10% affiliate code that and, you can share to and, all your friends. And remember, you can't trade any of these because they're exclusive to you. So uh, what do I do now? What do you do now? You get the fuck out of my office and play yourself some Fortnite, champ. I'll give you 5% profits of Paragon. Whatever it makes you make. But Paragon doesn't exist. That <laughs> Looks like you signed it already. <laughs> he's like, he's like, you know what? You know what? Okay, yeah. I see your point. I see your point. I'll give you the battle pass for free. All right. Oh. That in there. Hey, <laughs> no, it's like what about the premium battle pass? So hold the fuck on. <laughs> I just gave you the battle pass. And you're asking for the now, premium shit? Like I'm not giving you 20 levels. I feel like you're ungrateful right now. Okay, I feel like I'm you're really pushing it. Thousand V bucks now. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll give you those 25 levels. If you let me have a thousand V Bucks, like hold the fuck up. <laughs> it's like so I negotiate. So listen, you guys aren't gonna believe right. I I was like I got fired, got this dope severance package though. V Bucks. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Like, they sold me skins, bro. It sounded like a good idea. <laughs> yeah, fuck stock options. You get V Bucks. <laughs> fuck anything that will help me survive, bro. Fortnite forever. <laughs> they gave me a shirt Dude. as I got fired. He <laughs> was working at Psyonix and got some rare ass skins, and that's the, oh, the day they go. Dude. Oh, no more trading. Oh yeah, can't oh, trade those man. anymore. Oh my god, dude. I get, actually, that's that's not a terrible way to fire someone. That give is them, a... give them give them a shirt that says "I used to work at." Oh, <laughs> at Epic. <laughs> oh dude, look, no. dude, look, it's a picture of you. You're there, man. Like we literally credited you with this. I like, thank, thank you for crediting. But you're not getting any residuals from it, big dog. <laughs> All right, it's signed here exclusively in this contract that you forgot to read. It's like, but it looks like it was edited. You don't know about that, and just fucking push it aside. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> Hit him with a sad violin and push him out the door. Dude, I, I'm telling you, man. Like, I don't, I don't know if you guys saw like how many people <clears throat> Activision or Microsoft fired. With the Activision, uh, uh, you know, acquisition was it one hundred twenty thousand or twelve thousand? It was I, I don't... it was, was two thousand people. Okay, which was you know obviously they were like oh it's redundancy. It's still a lot. It's like it's redundancies. I'm like, and then you guys talked about the the profit you made for that quarter. I'm like, guys, you're a multi trillion dollar company. You can literally repurpose and push some of these people elsewhere. Like you have the money. Just say you didn't want to pay them. You know, like. And, and like I think that's part of like the whole brand thing. Like people were like you had like these really big defenders, which was fucking stupid. You, know, you shouldn't defend people like a multi trillion dollar company in the first place, one, and then them firing all these people. And then on top of that, now like you're gonna change your whole to like listen, the firings and all this other shit wasn't enough. 
It's like Microsoft going multi-platform. That that did it for me. Like that's the real fucking you know stab to the heart. It's like, bro, they just like ruined so many people's livelihoods, and now you're like, dude, fuck that. Listen, terrible thing by Microsoft. But have you heard they're going multi-platform? Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> they're killing Xbox. Like, dude, what the fuck? Where are your priorities as a person, dude? It's like, no, I'm a gamer. <laughs> I mean, um, do we know what department those 2,000 people were removed it from? It was, like, legitimately, like, from different All places. Diablo. Yeah. They actually... Like, like, what they if actually, they were all just involved in console creation? Nah, they, okay, that makes sense. No, nah, they had, like, an entire thing for, like, um, Xbox or uh, Activision Blizzard's new survival game they've been working on for, like, three years. Apparently, yeah. it was, like, I think it was, like, 80% done. And, um, yeah, they let go of the entire team. And I yeah, was like, like, it's not Power World. Why, yes. why wasn't it Power World? So. It's not yeah. World of Warcraft. What are you doing? This ain't StarCraft. Uh, there was a, there's a streamer called Pirate Software. Yeah. And and he used to work for Blizzard. Yeah. And he gives he, a- he talked. To, yeah. He, he talked about the, the, like the firing process through that. When, when they had the big layoffs, he was saying like, when you walked in the front door, all the management was like in a semicircle around the front door. And they would either tell you to go to your desk at, to to the left door, or they would tell you to go to the conference room in the in the right door. And if you went to the left door, you had your job. If you went to the right door, everyone got fired that walked through that other door. And I was like, Jesus Christ! I was like, My but, God! Yeah, dude, that's, I wonder that if they knew that awful. before the door option thing came you, up. Dude, I'm surprised yeah. no one got punched, man. I would fucking just like <laughs> hard swing, bro. Like this well, is how you. Treat yeah, it? I feel like I would ha- I would catch us an, an assault charge. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't really know from what i understand they just probably they, they at that moment like they probably thought they were just going into a They're conference all, it's like hey uh, what? like a meeting but as soon as you like start looking like you turn around like how come that guy's going to their desk because like you like what are you doing don't look over here <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> well i mean if they started off with like hey hey we're getting re- ready to announce this big thing then oh, you could be hyped up and be like that would be this is the moment i'm getting that fucking promotion i've been asking for Huh. I guess five hundred <laughs> I guess two thousand people getting promoted is not that bad. Not that bad. It's gonna be a good day. Oh, I got laid off. Uh, oh, I got laid off. Let me get my bat. I gotta I got batting practice right now. So, huh? What's up, like, Bobby, um, you motherfucker? <laughs> funny thing about that guy, he had a friend that he had come in to visit him at Blizzard headquarters and they walked past this department where they do the bannings and stuff like that, right? Well the guy had already been banned once, so he's his buddy's like, Hey, can I go visit that department? And he's like, yeah, let me check, you know, checks with the guys. And they go, no, let me talk to you for a second. He pulls him over. He's like, we just banned that guy right now. He's like, what? He's actively botting right now. <laughs> and they banned him while he was standing right there and then told him <laughs> while he was there. Fuck, man. That's a job? Yeah. Oh, uh, man, that Q- sounds Q- like a, a cake-ass Quality, uh, way. Quality assurance. <laughs> oh. There it is, man. All yeah, right. I'm because I'm, I'm working towards that that remote work, hundred percent remote work. Give me, give me some. I'll I'll ban people all fucking day. Give me. You can ban, you can ban people from your own Twitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I don't know who to ban, but I'll ban them. <laughs> yeah. Ban, 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 man. I will automate that shit. <laughs> they call me the rubber band man. Let's fucking get it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, I think we've talked. Jeez, enough about like Power World, Xbox, all that stuff, and other extra things. So, Jack, you got your. We're live right now, right? So, I mean, uh huh. Any questions in the chat? Yeah, any. Uh, I don't think we have any. Good, good. Chat? No. Give him 10 seconds. Yeah. <clears throat> if not. 10 wait. seconds. 10 seconds. <laughs> wait, I'm waiting for yeah, I, mean, I don't need Brad. 10 second to, delay. I don't need Brad to write anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, Disney can't sue us anymore, so it's okay. <laughs> Mickey's free, uh, No, as boys. long as you're using the Steamboat uh, version of uh, Mickey oh, yeah. Mouse, they can't sue you. Mickey free now. <laughs> okay. So, um, Chris, thanks for coming on. Well, I'm short yeah. notice. He just kind of I was like, hey, man, hop on. I know Brad was kind of upset because he wanted to be the star of the show. It normally happens that way. But thanks for your input on Power World and Xbox. Um, we are doing... Down the rabbit hole next, and Jack's choice for anime is, uh, from what I saw, it's interesting. <laughs> and I'm, uh, something about a job, something about a job, and I'm, I guess I'll look forward to it. I don't know. And it's, <laughs> it's rated mature. You cannot, it's okay. You cannot watch it, uh, with because your, it's a job. Yeah, you can, it is a job. <laughs> it's probably about the layoffs <laughs> that happened. Something, something big. <laughs> but that's going to be next week's episode. Um, 
we got some Helldivers 2 content coming out next the next couple weeks. That's going to be awesome. Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth is coming out as well. Probably going to do a giveaway for that. Um, and then March, it's Dragon's Dogma. Yeah, we got Dragon's Dogma 2, dude. And Rise of the Ronin, both games. Oh, dude, I know you're looking forward to Dragon's Dogma. Don't you fucking lie. This man put 100 <laughs> am, hours I'm, in that I'm game. Very, very excited. Super excited. Um, probably next episode for Pixelated Thoughts, I do want to talk about Helldivers 2. I think that'd be great. Jack, it's 30 bucks. I think it's $40, too, man. Too, not... too bad Jack's never going to play it. We're, we're going to do. We're gonna play it on Thursday. Impact? Nah, man, this is PlayStation. It's, got, it's on PC, too, but it's... It's listen. It's, divers, it's forty dollars, bro. If you like, I'll I'll I can gift it to you if you. you know. <laughs> it's a free game for you, bro. But you I'll, got. I'll, I'll give you a ten dollar gift certificate. But you got. You guys <laughs> laying me off. <laughs> you guys laying me off, brother. If I was laying you off, I literally would just like remove you. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like when I told I when I told Chibi earlier. I want a severance package. When I told Chibi, when I told Chibi earlier, like, oh no, you don't have to be on. We'll just get Chris on and stuff like that. In reality, I was like, we we found your replacement. <laughs> he has a corgi. Like, what am I like? I, he also has dogs. So I mean, we're good, you know. Um. <laughs> yeah. Any closing thoughts for anybody? Are we good? I'm good. Thank. Yeah, no. Uh, I like I like Power World and I oh, like geez. Game Pass. So, <laughs> <laughs> once again, thank you, Brad, for that insightful commentary. Always a pleasure to it's have. Synopsis. You on. It's a good summary. I fucking hate this guy. Anyway, so this has been Pixelated Thoughts. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Later. Ciao. Cool. <laughs>